Greetings. Greetings, Grand Risings. So, I don't know if it'll show up on the video once it's done. You can see it's adjusting itself. Can you see how the sun makes the skin look golden? And almost invisible? Isn't that interesting? That's what the light can do, right? <laughs> Uh, so we'll bring darkness into this conversation. We'll start this conversation with darkness. The idea of darkness, the fear of darkness. I mean, it is October. Let's, let's play. Let's play with some witchy stuff. So, everything comes from darkness. And we live in a world that has really um, impressed upon us to always seek out the light. Now let's just let's take a tree for example. If we pull all the roots out, roots aren't in search of light. Roots are in search of water. And usually water is underground, deep in the earth, in darkness. When we're formed in the womb, we're formed in water, in darkness. Triple darkness. The skin, the muscles, the cavity of the womb. No matter what the skin tone is. And this is this is where it gets tricky because the only um, the only living being that can create all colors. And I mean, if people just look at their bodies, I don't care how pale or dark you are you will see you will you will have spots of lightness say it could be your palm of your hand if you're very dark it could be parts little spots like freckles and what are freckles and what are beauty marks aren't those dark spots <laughs> so we even in our culture we we define certain things by color or or hue or darkness and then we we recognize things we recognize the pale because it's opposite of the dark so when it comes to light or even the moon or the stars the only reason we we recognize light is because we come from darkness and one of the most interesting things and actually it's a tiny bit heartbreaking is when babies are first born, especially if it's really bright out and they're not born in like a pool or they're not doing like a more natural birth. You can see like the fear and confusion in the child's expressions because of the light. So even in birth, we are brought to, we are brought into the light slowly. Plants. There are some plants that don't need um, to be in the dirt, but they do need the nighttime. And then that brings us back to the feminine divine and the great mother. All things come back to the men sees, because mothers are the true daughters of man. They are the true man. God is a man, meaning a a female representation and that the male is an exverted expression of the female with no cavity there's no cavity to bring in life there is a there is a storage this is this is part of the male's body there is a storage tank of seed so to speak but their body cannot in bring the seed into their body. Whereas women who have atopic pregnancies often or have cysts often, their body is actually trying to parthenogenicide. And where does that happen? In darkness. Even the testes are even the seed is in darkness so 
I bring this up because we also see a relation to like evil or bad things. And then we have this relation of skin tone in matching with this theory, right? Um, in skin tone where through, uh, through culture and through perception, we take on a theory of bad and darkness. Dark complexion is bad, dark menacing um, clothing, okay? And then we bring in these words like menacing and when this all stems from the divine feminine because in the yin and yang, the dark is the feminine. And when we think about creation and we think about the word chaos, or we talk about Tiamat, the great mother of creation, or, or, or the great, the great dragons. And we, we talk about the Sibyls and where they dwelt. They were often in dark caves. And then the importance of the womb being a dark cave of waters. And then you talk about the word chaos, which has been modernized into a word that is taken as bad when its original meaning was the infinite darkness or the infinite abyss or the deep waters or even a cave. And so what it shows is one, the law of compensation where we've taken what we have been um, kind of indoctrinated in or socialized to and then interpret that and, and kind of regurgitate a perception of darkness that is anti-beneficial and actually untrue. Without darkness, there's no awareness of light. And there's no growth, there's no babies. There must be darkness. It's interesting because like the incubator you would think would be dark and full of liquids of some sort. Why would these, you know, uh, for preemie babies and such like that, or even, um, you know, trying to create a womb outside of the actual female, why isn't there darkness involved? Why is there always these bright lights in those rooms? I, I, it, it's kind of interesting because we heal in darkness. A lot of planting is done by the moon, and then we go by the moon, the moon's cycle and the moon's energies. And um, when we're in conversation and in ritual with the moon and the waters and darkness I I I think there's more balance I mean that I think this is the whole point of everything is bringing us back to the divine feminine to the great mother's energies and knowledges which is and begins in darkness going inside is going into darkness it's inside of our bodies is dark is my theory I don't know I mean I guess I could do a meditation on that some light comes through like the eyelids and probably the ears wherever there's holes nose except for the yoni and the other one down there like those are dark that's darkness and what comes out of our body typically when we're getting rid of things is dark or the color of the food we're eating, right? So much happens in darkness and darkness is so important. And, and, um, I might be repeating this because in recording, I paused and then didn't hit record again. So I don't know what was, so, uh, when I also talk about skin tone, we talk about the beauty mark freckles and just to clarify everything has melanin in it so we can have more melanin in our skin and less melanin 
in our skin. All things have melanin in it. Melanin is part of, of it's, it's like part of how life forms itself. I think melanin is the matching vibration of vibration, color. So when you have certain vibrations meeting with the melanin, the, the skin tone will show up with how that melanin is vibrating. And all goes back to the dark, to the highly melanated creatrix, mother. You see all the tones of red and, and the freckles and then the beauty marks and you'll see light tones on darker skin. And so I'm saying all this because that is also, I feel like racism only exists or, or succeeds. I shouldn't say only exists, but um, it succeeds due to the perceptions of darkness and lightness. And this perception that light, the light, the sun is everything. When we wouldn't even know the sun or about shadows or any of that stuff without darkness. I mean, it's kind of cool how the sun is shining right now because we have this side over here that's so dark and this side over here that's light. This side is cooler. It's, it's softer. It's quieter. This side is brighter. It's, it's got like this kind of energy. You, the birds, you can hear the birds. It's like, it's interesting because there are birds over here, but the birds over here are more chirpy than the birds over here where it's still shadowy. No more shadows from the trees and such. And it's still fairly early on the west coast. It's just a little after nine in the morning. So, <clears throat> with all that is kind of the aspects of working with the forces also working with our forces and this is just like a fun side note when it comes to darkness October and dragons I think I might have mentioned this in another video but I'm pretty convinced I'm going to talk about two things here one is griffins the Khalifas and the griffins and, and the existence of dragons and more information is coming out about like even dictionaries not so long ago saying how dragons were rare. Is that my car? It is. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, I did it right this time. I'm recording again. I don't know what that is, but I'm not going to worry about it. I don't think it's anything major. I think it's, I think I know what it is. Anyhow, um, my theory, I think I've said this before in another video, but my theory is this is why that all the stories about killing the dragons and all the stories about like the serpent deities being destroyed and even the mermaids because without those creatures the the female human would have lost all of her kind of control you're not going to mess with a bunch of females that control griffins and bears and tigers and lions and dogs and cats and birds before before this modern era that's what we would do the sisters and the mothers, we would gather together and we would practice our stuff all the time because work and survival was already imbued in the community. So once we had imbued it in the community, we could, we could continue our plans. It was quite easy and we would stay connected to the planet. 
and I was watching um, Cam, Man Cam Mastry um, Penny on YouTube also. Go check her out. Super amazing stuff. All kinds of information. And she's written a book. And she talks about the grandma. It's really cool. She's really cool. Check check out her channel and her information. But she reminded me the, the better word is metaphysics. Because magic is science. It's not just some willy-nilly thing. And then we live in a culture that teaches us like darkness and magic. Ah, bad. You know, black magic. Well, there there is malintented magic. There's there's no specific culture or color that goes with that. We have a whole entire system built around a very unbenevolent spiritual system. There's a lot of death and there's a lot of harming women. It's one of the most violent indoctrinations out there. So we, and then we implement light to that. I, I get it because I fell for it. I used to, in some of my old videos, I end them with saying, peace, love, and light. Well, I had to learn kind of the hard way about the truth of darkness and the truth of light and how it's presented because I fell into bad company and bad things thinking I was following the light and people all around me were like oh yeah this is yeah which is part of a uh, cult mentality and part of cult influence because most people aren't aware of gaslighting. Most people are so indoctrinated in the fear of darkness that even when it shows up, they're not aware or no one's going to back them. If you start saying like, oh, something's off here, people are like, oh, no. they still focus on the light. Be positive, focus on positive things. That is a form of magic in itself or a form of metaphysics in itself because it keeps people in a state of being able to deny or reflect or reject certain abuses. Look what's happening in the world right now. I mean, talk about abuse and trickery. Using metaphysics literally to harm. And, and many people know about it, but also because we have been so um, miseducated away from our, our natural talents and our own met metaphysical powers, they've harnessed them and then are using them. This is where a group of people coming together, literally focusing. You don't even have to consciously gather with other people. And this is another part of the magic. And then we'll get to... Um, the civil war. <laughs> Another part of the magic is indoctrinating a specific form of magic that does work while leaving out spontaneous magic and unknown magic and inherent magic because that's how we used to teach. That's how we kept magic pure. So we, we teach the basic traditions then if I came up with a completely different tradition that worked, it would be embraced. We now live in a, in a culture where tradition is so indoctrinated that it, it, sometimes it's hard to switch out of that indoctrination into new metaphysics because we are in a new, we're in a new, we have new technology. We have new, uh, laws and uh, freedoms, so to speak, in certain places, like things have changed in certain places where freedom of speech and freedom of practice is actually available. And so that has been brought back in. Also, Great Mother wants us to remember the time when we all had our own individual magics 
incorporated with some tradition, but also open to changing and or bringing in new traditions. And the new tradition could be always implementing something different in the magic, something that hasn't been taught, something that isn't widely known. That's part of metaphysics. We have everyone doing the same magic. Yes, it can help. But also, how do you break that? You break it by bringing in new magics. Magic that worked before, similar to like trauma, trauma responses and emotional responses. Your survival skill might have worked before, but if you keep doing that, it may not benefit you anymore. So I'm not saying that certain things don't benefit. Just bring in the idea of bringing in new magics or your own magic being that new magic or adding something new to older magics or metaphysical practices. Now, the Civil War. I've been thinking about this for a long time because in one of my old videos I talk about how civil is another word that sounds like civil. And then we talk about property, ownership, and the divine feminine. I guess there isn't really a good spot. Um, I don't know, try that. The, the, the truth about who owned the land. So we just do like a mini, mini timeline, so to speak. So we have matriarchal, indigenous, dark, cultures, dark toned, dark skin toned cultures in the Americas, all around, all over the world. But let's be specific about the Americas, especially in the South and the Florida, all the regions that are going through stuff right now while I'm doing this recording, but all the, all the South, Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, parts of Texas and Louisiana. Not where most of the Civil War was. The Civil War. Because why do you call something civil and then put war next to it? Oh, because it's civilians? Well, who owned the lands? And then we have all these stories of many toned women losing their land during that war. Hundreds of hundreds of acres, hundreds of farmland, hundreds of acres of farmland, hundreds of acres of land that were husbandry because husbandry means taking care of a farm, farming. And it used to be done by the mothers. And then when we became more sedentary and we became more interactional with males, they would also help with the farming. This is where the word husband originated from. So what was the war really about? They want to tell us it was about brown people. I don't think that that's completely untrue, but it wasn't about slavery. It was about taking the rights of the Sibyls who owned those lands because it was all matriarchal before all this, you know, before, even after the Spanish and the Dutch and the Italian and the Portuguese came, there were still matriarchal groups and mothers that owned land. So you create a civil war. Even back then, they did the same tactics back then. They're going to tell everybody this is what it's about. So everyone joins in the war. And no one listened to females back then anyways. And on my own part, you know, I'm going to still, I'm going to go back to say female humans on many. We, we talk about decentering males. We are the... If females, if word magic, speaking of compensation and darkness and all that kind of stuff, if we the, are the original man, the original men, and we are anti-men, like I say, I don't like men. I'm constantly saying, like, I don't really like men. 
inadvertently because the word has been manipulated because I am, I am the true man. I'm the true man because I have a womb. They are the womb man. They are the, they are the being that came out of the womb. They are the womb man. We are the men. And when you take the word fee male and you break it up into like the word magics that we're aware of and you have fee or phi or first male or pre male before male. So when the man's like, oh, you female, they're trying to insult. Just like I saw somebody call uh, somebody uh, broad. Well, I think they meant it as an insult. However, broad is actually a highly revered woman. Queens used to be called broads. And they would say like broad shoulders. These all come from the female, from the woman, from the so-called, the, I feel best saying female. Because in the world where men still looks towards those who have a phallus on their body, an enlarged phallus on their body. I don't want to, I'm just saying like part of reclaiming us and decentering males is reclaiming our language. We don't need to come up with a new language. We have a language. It's all languages. All languages came from the Divine Mothers. And if we go back far enough, we can see that it belongs to us. And that it came from predominantly the Mothers of the Americas. And it's coming out. These were all things shown to me years ago. Years ago. I've been talking about this for years. You go back to some of my old videos. They may not be as popular because it's not talking about all kinds of witchy stuff, but it definitely talks about how we're from, that America is the true, um, quote unquote, Africa. This is where everyone came from, that we are the indigenous people, the so-called African Americans, and that the great mother started everything. So here we are. <laughs> here we are so that's my theory and probably truth about the Sybil war not the civil war it was a Sybil war all they had to do is just trick it a little bit it still worked within their laws of spelling and oh I was going to talk about the Statue of Liberty so the Statue of Liberty is also an example of ma of metaphysics in front of our face. So it's a copper toned female chained to a star fort. We made the star forts. The star forts are for the dog stars, for the sea stars who created them in their matriarchal minds together all at once, instantly, all around the world. This Tartaria, the reason why they erased it, it was females. It was when females ruled. It was when the world was matriarchal. All the beautiful buildings, all the abundance of water and food and comfort and healing and the bells and all the sounds and all the art and all the, that was all matriarchal. Tartaria, Maria, I mean, or tar, Tartara. Goddess, great mother, great Sybil. Sisters all around the world. They did this together. It will be shown. It will show up. And that was a time of dragons. So yeah, the time, the time. So even after the fall and patriarchy started kind of taking its hold, there were still dragons and there were still mothers who worked with those dragons. And we still had our sanctuary and our peace so to speak our own rights and we still had we didn't we weren't forced into the marriage we weren't 
we weren't forced into a submissive, like, no queens and no judges. I mean, the Queen of England still, like, placated patriarchy, right? So that shift happened, my theory is, after the last dragon was slain. And I think the, I don't think there was a last dragon slain. I think the true dragons went into hiding and that when great mothers are put back in their appropriate places, they will return. There's that. But Statue of Liberty is, and then, uh, people are saying like the Statue of Liberty is Satan or not Satan, but Lucifer. So if you watch my other video where I talk about Mother Mary, Mother Mary was called Mary, Mary Lucifer. Great goddess Diana was also called Diana Lucifer because it meant light bearer. It's also been given to the planet Venus. So the word, these words were also um, transcribed from another language, Hebrew. And then Hebrew takes on a whole nother meaning when you bring it back to the American indigenous people. There's a different Hebrew. Okay. That's a lot. My phone's getting hot. And I think it might be a good time to say until next time. Thanks for being here. <laughs> and we'll be back.